Sea of Thieves offers the essential pirate experience, from sailing and fighting to exploring and looting. Everything whoa, 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 hold on there, buddy. I think you'll find every Sea of Thieves... Sea of... Sea of... You might find every Sea of Thieves video starts something like this. Let's, uh, spice it up a little bit, shall we? That's more like it! I remember first hearing about Sea of Thieves all the way back in the mystic years of 2018. I think it was on an episode of Newsround? I guess that makes sense. If there was any British developer that was ever going to appear on the BBC, it would be the same ones that could get the original license for a James Bond game. Anyway, at the time I was actually really excited to play Sea of Thieves. This looked like a really interesting and cool game. There was just one small problem with my plan. This was my gaming PC at the time. And also the game wouldn't even come to PC for two years. And then, in 2020, with, well, very little else to do, I decided to finally be able to give it a go with my slightly better bit of hardware. If you think I'm going to do the same joke again, you're wrong, I'm not. This is far too useful. And I think I gave it, like, three hours of goes, but I just couldn't work out what I was doing. And it was all thanks to an amazing video by my friend Marzi that I would finally give this game another shot. And let's just say... I fell in love. So, in an attempt to stop playing the game and get back to that YouTube channel I'm supposed to be starting, here's a video on my love for this game. I've tried my best to explain it, but I'm bad at this. Ah! When I'm desperately trying to get other people to play this game, I am often asked one question. What is there to do in Sea of Thieves? Well, after completing the tutorial and being given a gun by a ghost like any true-blooded American, you'll find yourself loading into the Sea of Thieves of Seas of Thieves proper. As you come around from being blackout drunk and having no memory of what happened between passing through the Shroud, that's the in-game name for the World Edge, much more than your average you just can't go any further, and arriving at a tavern that could be up to three and a half times the length of the Las Vegas Strip away from where you started, you have the first thought any responsible person would. To my car! But once you get to the boat, it can be kind of hard to know what to do next. Like Breath of the Wild, you can see the end bosses from the start. World events cause more pol light pollution than whatever Elon Musk is up to this time, and offer some of the hardest challenges and biggest awards. But I don't think we're ready for them just yet. Let's just go dig up some treasure for now. As a fresh-faced pirate, you're best to work with the original trading companies. These are the Gold Hoarders, a group of bankers with skin disorders all pirates crave, the Order of the Souls, who will send you on the same quest as the Gold Hoarders do, only expect you to fight Papyrus at the end of them, and the Merchant's Guild, that would have had you play as Pirate Postman Pat delivering plants to peer pirates, but the best thing to do now is trade commodities between the outposts for a quick bug. Forget FedEx, it's all about Forex now. But why would you work for any of them when you could work for an edgy dude who stands on an island in the middle of the map and is happy for people to see him wearing pyjamas? On the subject of the Reaper's Bones, we should probably have a chat about PvP. In a lot of multiplayer games, when you see another player, you shoot them. Sea of Thieves is an exception to this rule, as you only do that 80% of the time. However you interact with other players, it's arguably the most exciting moments on the sea. You have no idea whether they're just going to turn around and start blunderballing you to death, or maybe they do mean to share all this gold. From having a massive ship battle around Reapers, to just sharing a grog in the tavern, then you never know what happens when you meet another player on the sea. Okay, Watson, that's all well and good, but you know people are worried about dying to sweaty players who've been playing this game for four years longer than they have. What's your advice for them? Well, right now is actually a really great time to start playing Sea of Thieves if you're worried about getting attacked by PvPers, because they're too busy fighting each other so they can cosplay as Skeletor. And the other thing to remember is this game is about risk and reward. The further you go from an outpost, the more treasure you stack, the higher your embassy level, the bigger of a risk you have of getting sunk. And that's just how nearly every video game works. I mean, that's very easy for me to say, but I also get very angry when I get sunk. WHAT?! But the best thing about the actual fighting is the flexibility it offers. From cursed cannonballs to using explosive kegs, there's always another way to sink a ship than a straightforward fight. And it's that super flexibility about how you interact with what the game offers that I think keeps me playing it. I think the other main aspect of the game I want to talk about is the storytelling. I say think because, as always, I write these scripts as I record and edit them because I have no process. Every time you hit the seas, you'll find a different story awaits you. And it's not always the story you want. 
If anything, it's the unexpected part of your journey across the seas that makes this game so exciting. Even the already legendary Quest of the Veil vale can be turned on its head when a Reaper 5 portals into your server. And a session that was supposed to be a quick Gold Hoarder's Vault can become a careful game of outpacing, fighting and making friends as you travel around the Ancient Isles. This is the main design loop of Sea of Thieves. Simple, procedurally generated quests that send you off to where the action is. But that isn't always the case. You will get voyages that aren't nice and relaxing, so you can just raise some money to buy some nice cosmetics for your ship. But when you don't, it can be a chaotic, piratey mess, and I love it. To get a feel for this, you really need to see other people play. Oh look, I have a video on my channel that is exactly one of those stories I mentioned here, oh look at that. But if you want to watch a good content creator, and enjoy videos that kind of explain what I'm trying to talk about here, I can't recommend enough Cliff the Story Guy. His videos show the best interactions of the Sea of Thieves, and I think if you take the same attitude to the game that he does, you'll have a really good time. So there we go, a long and winding video on my thoughts on the Sea of Thieves. Now get up there, Swabby. Hunt for gold, defeat skeletons, explore the land. But for the love of the pirate lord, stop stealing Marzi's fish! Ugh!